four prior to this you have already undergone the two blocks that is block one and block two where uh, we our other resource person has already covered the growth models one and growth model two so growth model one we have already discussed introduction to economic growth the herald domar model and the neoclassical growth model of solo subsequently we have also discussed the growth and distributions the uh, total factor productivity and growth accounting and the technological progress and technological change now we have here slightly deviated and then skip block 3 which will be covered by same resource persons again that is covering the optimal economic growth multi sector model of growth endogenous endogenous growth models and this stochastic growth model now in the block 4 today sir would be covering the social and institutional aspects of development which is also equally essential so here basically you will be learning development and under development measurement and indicators of development what are the measures of development what are the measurement related issues the population and development the economic developments and various institutions then the unit 15 the last unit will be covering the market incompleteness and information uh, institute informal institutions in the rural economy so without taking much of your time i would like to invite the sponsor to take the session thank you sir uh, thank you dr asis giving me the opportunity to be with you and with my dear young friends uh anyway it is opportunity for me to meet with my dear friends my student friends anyway uh, as dr asis introduced me i shall uh, cover block 4 that is social and institutional aspect of development here we have to cover a uh, five unit that is development and non development measurement and indicators of development population and development economic development and institution market incompleteness and informal institution in the rural economy uh as you know that uh, when we talk about uh, development the most important question is uh the fruits of development uh, or the what we call the economic growth and development we shall dis uh, distinguish both the thing later on uh one important question is when the economic growth is going on it is not uh, the fruits what we call uh, cannot be shared by everybody because there is existence of poverty and inequality and here before going to the topic i shall clarify what is the a uh, concept of growth and what is the concept of development one question uh when we talk about economic growth economic growth you know that that is a, a quantitative term for example uh, increase in the production of paddy or uh, take the for example uh, the increase in the production of coal or any other thing that is called growth growth mean only unidimensional mean only increase in the production of goods and services whereas when we talk about the development development is a multi dimensional process here uh, we talk about uh, this not only uh, increase in the uh, physical quantity but also increase in the institutional changes what we call for example uh, the technological changes education everything that uh, so the question is that growth is a subset and uh, development is a set there is a whole concept so anyway so when we talk about uh, the growth and development most important question what we are facing in the under developed country particularly the most important point is the concept of the poverty and inequality uh, remember the twin problem of poverty and inequality one you know that the suppose you the given resources we have let us say 1000 rupees and out of 1000 rupees we can produce or uh, two commodities one is necessary goods or uh, take for example some luxury goods uh one thing if we produce you, you might have heard about this production possibility curve in your microeconomics that if we spend all the resources on the production of luxury goods then uh, we are not going to produce any necessary goods or when we are going to produce only the necessary goods we are not able to produce the luxury goods so 
the PPC tells us the combination of necessary and luxury goods to be produced with the given amount of resources. And here, uh, the luxury goods mainly that is uh, consumed by the rich people and uh, the necessary goods consumed by the poor people. So the question is that when the people are not able to get the basic needs, I mean the necessary like food, food, clothes, shelter. So when this concept arises, we may call it the concept of your poverty. So when we talk about the poverty, we are we are facing two important terms. One is called the absolute poverty and another is called the relative poverty. And absolute poverty and relative poverty. Remember these two important, very important terms. And here, absolute poverty means deprivation. In when somebody is not able to get the basic requirement of like uh, like food, clothes, shelter. This is called absolute war or absolute poverty. Uh, this concept what we find in our country like India. Most of the developing country where majority of poor are there, they are facing the concept of absolute poverty. Whereas relative poverty means you are getting the needs, you are getting the basic uh, necessary like food, clothes, shelter you are getting. But the question is, there is a question of inequality. For example, in America also you will find the concept of relative poverty. Somebody is having, let us say, uh, $2 million. Somebody is having, uh, let us say, $1 lakh. So that differences, that uh, called the relative poverty. Relative means uh, there is a comparative term that uh, you are having more income, I am having less income. So in the underdeveloped country, that uh, the concept of absolute poverty is there, but there is a large inequality in the distribution of income. Some people are very rich, some people are very poor. So this type of concept what we uh, receive in the underdeveloped country generally. So anyway, so when we are going to uh, talk about the concept of poverty that uh, how to measure, how to estimate the concept of poverty. So there are various concepts available. For example, head count. Head count ratio means absolute poverty may be measured by the number of uh, head counts. It means how many people of the country are living below poverty line? You might have heard about the concept of BPL or below poverty line. I mean, a minimum level of income out of which he, he can able to get the basic needs. So, for example, in our country, that there are various measurements are there, different economies are there, or the Tendulkar committee is there. Okay, so they are measuring that this much of um, this level of income or this much of income is required to get the basic needs uh, that what we call the headcount ratio what we call. Then again, there is a question of uh, poverty gap. Poverty gap means suppose this is the uh, line or suppose uh, 500 rupees is fixed for poverty line support. And how many people of your country are living below this level or how much of money is required? How much of money is required for that person to to elevate the APL, what we call the above poverty line, so that the, the gap arises, that is the percentage of population and the annual income. So the gap is called the poverty gap. So there is very important concept what we are discussing. Anyway, another uh, concept one we are discussing uh, about the poverty, there are other type of measurement like, uh, uh, for example, um, when we talk about the poverty that uh, in our country, varieties of uh, uh, concept of the, uh, the in our state that you recently you are uh, listening that uh, people who are returning from uh, the garden or any other thing or the common man most of the farmers the poor those uh, are deprived section of the society what we call the living below poverty line so when we talk about the poverty so what are the impact of poverty when we talk about the poverty the most important impact of poverty is that poverty or the poor people are not assessed to credit. A very contrast situation. So for the poor need more money, but he has no collateral. Collateral means the amount of, for example, you have some land out of which you have to go for mortgage or something else or gold or any other thing. The poor man needs more money. He has no collateral to deposit. Rich man who who, man, who has so everything there is getting more money. For example, you might have a rich man uh, has more mana collateral and he can deposit more thing and he will get more loan. So most important question is poor need money, but they are not deprived of getting money. So it is a very uh, important uh, concept. Second question is that 
uh, the poor people are not insured or rather the insurance companies or any other thing that they are not getting all sort of things then another uh, problem of poverty is that poverty and malnutrition or nutrition nutrition you know that the the minimum uh, carbohydrate or protein or vitamin or the requirement food so they are not getting and normally the people are uh, their, their health condition is comparatively uh, very poor as compared to the other class of people or you might have heard that uh, people uh, in african region or even in the south uh, asian region or in india in different part of the country that malnutrition is a very important concept that the poor people are facing or they are not getting the basic requirement uh, the minimum food requirement or their uh, standard of living is comparatively very poor then another question is that uh, the, the living standard or the availability of household or any other thing so that is also not uh, sufficiently available uh, for the poor people so normally the poor people are not access to uh, credit they have no insurance facility their health standard is comparatively very poor so this is a very fundamental problem that the concept of poverty uh, what we can able to get now we shall uh, uh, discuss about the uh, inequality of income inequality of income mean inequality in the distribution of income that distribution of income mean out of the uh, suppose there is a cake what is your share from the total cake available so that is the concept of your inequality of income take for example uh, in a country like uh, uh, india that we, we we find there is a vast inequality of income uh, that the concept of uh, for example social uh, justice is not there many people are uh, only only 10% of people of our country they are uh, capturing around 80% of the national income or the rest 90% of people they have only 10% of income so this is called the inequality in the distribution of income and you will be astonished when you go for the uh, data that uh, how inequality is uh, there uh you'll be astonished uh in a, in, in a country like uh, uh, just i'm referring uh, one uh, question that uh, index for example one second uh, yeah so the, the question is that uh, when uh, the inequality of income is there uh, it, it is related to the the stages of economic development when the economic development is going on then the degree of income inequality rises in the beginning stages when the country is poor or let us say what we call the uh, pre newtonian era before newton or before the industrial revolution or anything else that almost all the people are poor so in such a condition that there normally there is a uh, equality of income if nobody is having any income all are equal but when economic growth takes place some people particularly the rich section of the people the enterprise class of the people the business class of the people or the producer class of the people those who are whom we call the the haves class of the people so the gap between the haves and have nots that uh, increases and what simon couldn't call it the opposite of u shape of uh, the the distribution system so question is when the economic development going on the fruits of development is normally pocketed by a few class of people or uh, or a few rich class of people so the inequality continue continue over a longer period of time so it, it is been discussed with the help of the lorenz curve or any other activity that uh, from the equal distribution curve what is the difference with the country lies or when the the lorenz curve for, is far from the equal distribution curve the level of poverty is comparatively more in a country anyway in our country or in almost all not only india almost all the underdeveloped country they are facing such a situation when poverty and inequality are continuously rising over a period of time anyway so another question that uh, oh, what will happen when uh, there is a equal distribution of income if when uh, there is equal distribution of income the allocation of resources will be better everybody will uh, get a good share everybody can uh, take the opportunity and they can able to lead a, uh, a, a minimum standard of uh, standard of living or a, a sustainable standard of living good star, honest uh, living is possible when there is a distribution of income then uh, normally when uh, there is inequality that is a, a loss of the productive capacity 
majority of the people, 80% of the people, suppose uh, they are uh, not getting good sizable income, automatically their productive capacity is less and uh, their health standard is poor, their uh, access to credit is poor, less and they are not in a position uh, to go for uh, a, a better economic uh, participation in the country. So normally that many economists they view that uh, there is a loss of human welfare, loss of welfare in the society when automatically uh, distribution is not equal. So when there is an equal distribution of income, there will be no wastage of resources, proper distribution of income, bring equality in the uh, parity in the society or what is the legalitarian type of society or uh, what we call the socialistic pattern of society can bring a better allocation of resources, the productivity will not be no, not be less and automatically welfare of the society will be better when there is a uh, equality or proper distribution of income in the society. So anyway, so what shall we do to eradicate uh, this sort of thing that another one important question is that we have to uh, how equality is possible. Question is that uh, you are having more income, she is or he is having very less income. So here the question is, suppose a bucket of uh, a balti or bucket is there with the full of water and one is empty, then you will have to withdraw some water. It means you have to impose taxes upon the rich people and take that part of the income and that to, that is to be used for the development of the, the poorer class of the society. So the question is, when there is a progressive rate of taxes, the progressive taxes are mean when your level of income rises, automatically uh, the rate of taxes will go up. And if a progressive tax or tax on the luxury goods increases automatically, then uh, distribution will be possible and the, the poor will get good fruit and the equality is possible and poverty can be eliminated properly. Anyway, so when uh, this concept of poverty uh, is going on. Another question is uh, coming that uh, how to measure the development? So as I told you earlier, the another concept is the measurement of uh, or, or the indicator of development, what we call the economic development. So you know that we first we define, we have to define what is economic development. So remember, economic development is a process. Economic development is a process whereby the real per capita income, real per capita income increases over a period of time. So question is, it is a continuous process. Economic development does not mean that uh, uh, development uh, uh, today there is an increase in the uh, uh, income or any other thing and tomorrow that uh, there is. That is not the question. When income level of the society increases over a period of time, over a period of, a period of time, a long period of time, and that process is called the uh, real per capita. Real, remember, money per capita income and real per capita income. Here, real per capita income in income in terms of goods and services, the standard of living of the people will increase. So, uh, again, I, I am just referring to another point what I told from the in the beginning on the growth and development. You know, remember, growth is a concept uh, of developed countries. For example, this uh, Japan people of Japan or US or most of the European nation, they talk about economic growth. I mean, they want that the production should increase because uh, they have solved almost all the problem like the problem of education, problem of housing, problem of infrastructure. These problems have already been solved in that countries. But when we talk about India, uh, not only that we are yet to establish school, electrification is necessary. Uh, let us say social changes is necessary, institutional changes is necessary. So growth is a concept of the development, but development is a concept of underdevelopment, like India. When we talk about development, I mean economic development, you were uh, another very there is a uh, don't confuse here that uh, growth is a part of development. Growth is a part of development, development is a whole concept whole concept, multi-dimensional concept, but growth is a unidimensional concept, I mean talking only about the production of uh, goods and service. Anyway, so uh, remember as I told you earlier, some uh, like the concept of equality, inequality, it will be astonished when you will receive some statistical information, for example, uh, income 
less than let us say 785 dollar rupees there are 63 number of countries and around 32 percent of the uh, people uh, they are living with such income it means with the high income group people there are uh, around uh, 52 number of countries are there their income is uh, around 70 or 80 percent of the people of the world and 80 percent of the gdp gross domestic product yeah gross national product is pocketed by only 20 percent of the people and less than 20 percent of the countries and almost the developed country like america or australia or, or the uh, european economy or japan or singapore or some of these opec countries their standard of living or yeah that their gross national income is comparatively 80 percent and almost all the underdeveloped countries two thirds of the countries we are having less than 20 percent of the uh, gni or the um, world uh, total wealth here uh, when we talk about uh, the views of different economies about the concept of economic development as i told you it is a multi-dimensional concept uh, we have to increase not only the per capita income but also some structural changes is necessary some occupational changes is necessary some other changes or many changes is necessary in the underdeveloped country so remember uh, here we have to um, some economist has viewed that when we talk about the development a uh, first question is that we have to uh, increase the level of employment in the country whether the employment is changing or employment is not changing that is another very important concept second question is uh, the changes in the composition of export composition of export mean uh, suppose in a basket what type of goods and service you are exporting for example india uh, for a long period of time we were a primary exporting country primary product primary product mean agri and product we are exporting whose market value or in the international market comparatively it is very less so what type of goods and services we are exporting and what type of goods and services we are importing so the question is that when there is a change in the composition of export over a period of time new goods technological goods or which market price is comparatively very high if such type of goods are exported to other country definitely we sell that the development growth is taking place then another question most of the important hindrance what we call the rate of increase in population so question is that uh, underdeveloped countries of the world uh, they are packed with around uh, two thirds of the population of the world so in a country like india here that the rate of increase in population is comparatively very high and when we can able to break uh, the growth of population over a period of time we can say that development is taking place so another question is the distribution of income so distribution of income in mean the share that the, the, the talks about the question of equality that how much of um, what is, what is, whether there is a uh, fair distribution of income or unfair distribution of income so when there is a fair distribution of income or equal distribution of income automatically economic development uh, you you can see the economic development in the country so uh, uh, i told you four important things one question is that employment should increase there is a shift in the composition of export then the rate of increase in population should be under control and there should be a proper distribution of income if all these four things takes place we can say that uh, the development is taking place uh, here now we come uh, into another very important topic that is uh, uh, indicators of development or indicators of economic welfare indicator you know that something which indicates that is called indicator for example when you are going with your pipe there is the indicator when you uh, put a left or right automatically you will see that uh, where the driver is going on so similarly what are the indicators of development whether the development is visible or not visible in what way we can able to see the development and there is otherwise known as indicators of development anyway so there are different type of indicator one important indicator is your gross national product the most important indicator most popular indicator what we call the gross national product so remember when the gnp or yeah, gross national product of a country is increasing over a period of time we can say that economic development is taking place so there is a simple assumption that when gnp is increasing that economic development is taking place but 
this is uh, there are many demerits and uh, then many uh, debate related to the gnp for example uh, if uh, the gnp is increasing but the population is increasing and the population is increasing faster than gnp so gnp is increasing at the rate of 10% and population is increasing at the rate of 15% for that so you cannot say that the development is taking place the one very important uh, defect of this measurement another question is uh, the, the gnp suppose uh, a country is uh, the gnp is increasing because only few rich people few enterprise for example in, in our country like uh, reliance or rata or dalmia or adani or any other so but their income is increasing automatically gnp will increase but when gnp of this reliance or rata or dalmia or anybody is increasing it is not necessary that the standard of living of the people of your village or your ward or your town or your suburban area is increasing you know, this is very important question that some people are getting the benefit but this is just like the mathematical average when we talk about the mathematical average uh, the mean will tell the thing but that is not the perfect one. another question is that uh, the gnp may increase when we produce more number of luxury goods and services when luxury goods and services are produced for example we are producing air conditioner or, or costly computer or television or consumer durable then gnp may increase but these goods will not be taken by or uh, that that will not be shared by the uh, poor people so question is uh, gnp is increasing but standard of living is not increasing and the economic development is not taking place as a whole so the question is that gnp is not a, a good indicator and uh, there are many challenges to the concept of gnp uh, another concept uh, we have developed or economists agree is per capita income per capita income you know that the that the total national income of the country divided by the population that is only per capita income or pci so when the per capita income or per capita you may tell the real income of the country is increasing over a period of time it is also the same uh, facing the same criticism per capita income may increase when there is increase in the income of a section of people total income divided by population if the total income increases automatically per capita income will go up so the first uh, the, uh, the the same type of demerits yeah same type of defect you can find out in the per capita income as well as the uh, later on different economists uh, has used another concept for example the concept like peak uh, we shall discuss in detail about the pqli people's quality of life index and sdi a human development index so you know that uh, this is a uh, pqli or the uh, physical quality of life index so this is a very important concept here the concept was developed by professor d morris d morris in uh, 79 he viewed uh, how to see the development he has taken three important indicator one indicator is life expectancy at birth life expectancy means the average number of life a person live from his birth till death so that is called lei or life expectancy at is or lie so when the life expectancy of a country is increasing it means the average number of year is increasing automatically we can say that the standard of living or economic development is taking place second important question is infant mortality infant mortality means the death rate of the children uh when the number of infant uh, or yeah, the children death of children is very high we can say that development is not taking place uh, or when the third important question is literacy or education attainment ratio what we call so he has taken three important indicator one indicator is for example in india that in 1951 for example the life expectancy was just 32 years 32 years and today it is 67 years it means life expectancy has increased similarly we will uh, go to the infant mortality rate uh, in the beginning of the uh, 19th century for example 1901 20th century beginning of the 20th century 
the death rate of the children was around 236 per 1000 so children to birth and today it has come down to less than 30 in some state like in odisha it is comparatively very high in kerala it is very less third important question is uh, literacy rate for example in in 1901 the rate of literacy in our country was just only 5 5% 5 were illiterate literate in 1951 the rate of literacy was just 18% and in the last census 2011 it was uh, 74.75 or around 75% today uh, as we are yet to get the uh, new information on the census is not coming around suppose 80% of the people from 5% to 80% there has been increase in the rate of, rate of literacy so when the rate of literacy rises automatically we can say that economic development is taking place so these are three important indicator uh, professor d morris has taken and on the basis of that uh, he has uh, given points uh, for example uh, sweden or america or finland or new zealand or switzerland most of the countries they are uh, their performance is comparatively better then the performance of most of the underdeveloped country like india or pakistan or even even know that the sri lanka and other their their performance is comparatively very better than that of our country sri lanka is ahead of us or uh, most of the uh, african country let us say they are lagging behind their economy development is not taking place but uh, recently uh, in 1990s another concept has been uh, developed by undp united nations development program that is called human development index sdi which is very popular until now we are accepting it and in the sdi three important uh, concept uh, has been taken like your pqli one is longevity longevity means the as i told you that life expectancy second question is knowledge or what we call the uh, literacy literacy mean uh, literacy you know that the reading writing and understanding of a particular language and the third question is that income level income level mean what is the, uh, the dollar earning of a particular individual that talks about the standard of living so they have taken the average of three important thing one is life expectancy at birth second question is educational attainment ratio and the third one is uh, the the real per capita income of the people if you tell uh, the average of all these things you know that we will get the concept of sdi and accordingly you know that it will do make the point that the usa sudan japan south korea so these country are comparatively ahead of our country and as per the sdi estimation in 1990 position india's position was 128 so uh, it will measure the level of development of different country our concept or we are not uh, doing well as per the sdi index anyway so normally the sdi index the pqli index so these are some of the very important uh, concept uh, uh, for the measurement or what we call the indicator of development then uh, we shall enter to the another very important uh, concept that is a very popular concept and what what you know and you are aware about the population and economy so population and economy development do you know so when we talk about the population uh, population is uh, the uh, blessing you may call it is a blessing because population are the factor of production without population economic development is not possible even though poor factor of production are their land labor capital organization so population is the primary primary factor of production or the original factor of production second uh, question is that the uh, why population is necessary for a country population is necessary because population are the consumer so for two important reason population is a very important concept for every country one is population are the factor of production and population are just uh, the the consumer so a uh, population is very important for a country but question is there are many other side also excessive population is a hindrance 
excessive population is a hindrance in the way of economic development of any countries. For example, countries like India, China, uh, Brazil, Indonesia, almost all, you know, most of the developing countries, you know, that they, they, they have a, a two third population of the world out of around uh, 800 uh, billion people. We are having two third, around 600 popul crores of population belongs to this country. We are in India, around 17 percent, 18 percent of the world population belongs to India. China is having around 20 percent of the population. So we both the countries and some other country mix up half of the population of the world. But comparatively, if you talk about the India, we are having 18 percent of the population, but the land available is only 2.4. Mean with a huge population our land availability is very less. So here we shall uh, discuss about the human resources as a factor of production. Uh, what are the importance and what are the problems we are facing when, about, uh, when we are talking about the human resources of a country. So three important, uh, three or four important questions are there. One is uh, when population rises comparatively the very serious problem we are facing is the problem of food, problem of housing, problem of education, problem all round problem. You know that in the you can see the urban area, suburban, suburb, suburban area, or you might have heard about the the post COVID or the returning of the laborer from other countries, or now other states. You know it is a very serious problem for a country like India, where the population is beyond the culture. And uh, because uh, in a welfare country like India, you have to feed everybody. If the responsibility of the government, as you know that you have voted and in an election or somewhere, uh, you have the equal rights, and you can alter the government. So the government has no way but to feed you. It's a very important uh, concept what we are facing. Anyway, so not only that, the human resources, of the underdeveloped countries, particularly India or some other country, we have quantitative population, but comparatively the quality is less because the health condition of the people is not uh, sufficient or not good. The people are not getting the, the basic requirement of life or they cannot able to work, or they are not trained, they are not educated. So, if you go to the Japan or America or European countries or somewhere else, the skill level of skill is level is comparatively very high. Anyway, so when we talk about uh, the population, there are two important theories. One is the Malthusian theory of population or theory given by the Thomas Robert Malthus, Pierre Malthus in 1798. He has written on book that essay on the principle of population, where he told the uh, very important uh, concept, remember this, Malth Malth Malthusian theory of population. This tells you when uh, population growth, populace, uh, population of uh, food production in a country increase at a arithmetical progression, whereas population increase at a geometrical progression. Food production increase at arithmetical progress. Arithmetical progression mean one, two, three, four, five like this. And geometrical progression mean two, four, eight, sixteen, double double. So you know, after a period of time, year five, year ten, or twenty years later, the population overcome the food production, and almost all the people suffer. And if you the population rises faster than the level of food production. That was the view given by uh, Thomas Robert Malthus, or that is popularly known as Malthusian theory. And he has viewed another very interesting thing that uh, one population, how to check the population? He viewed the nature will take its own care. And there is a very important topic going on today around the world, discussion is going on among the economists. The nature, when the population is, or when there is overpopulation, people will not get food, different pro problem like your war, natural calamities, DGJs like COVID-19 or any other thing. So it will take its own care. It means automatically population uh, will 
be stand still and that can be safe. So that was a view. Uh, many may not agree, and there is a negative view comparatively, we will say. Uh, but uh, in a country like India, I will say the Malthusian theory of population is not uh, applicable to our country. For example, in 1951, you know that our population was around 40 crores population in our country. And today, 120 or 130 crores population. I mean, within the last uh, 70 years, the population has increased three times. But if you go to the food production, in 1951, the food production was around 50 million ton. And today, 297 million ton. In this year, 295 million ton. I mean, four times increase in the food production. The Malthusian theory of population is not applicable to our country, and that has been uh, criticized by many economists. Anyway, uh, if you go to the, the uh, concept of uh, the uh, population, another theory has been developed by different economists, like that is called the optimum theory of population. And what the optimum theory tells? Uh, you know, the past world war. After the past world war, many people died, and uh, the, the the productive capacity, uh, this uh, fatality ratio of most of the European countries is comparatively very low. And there was a discussion among the people that how to increase the population. For the first time of the for the first time in the history, economists and the policymakers they think that there should be a minimum level of population because if there is a shortage or scarcity of population, we will face the problem like. Uh, the the problem of factors of production on when there is no population where you will get the consumer and the problem what uh, this european economy in europe population is stable in uh, ussr or earlier ussr today russia the population is negative there is a negative growth of population so according to this theory uh, a tolerable limit when the per capita income or the real per capita income is increasing and population is increasing but the real per capita income is increasing at a faster rate than the population of uh, your country then uh, it is not dangerous thing a limit is there when the per capita income and population both are equal after that it is a problem so some economists they view India is still not overpopulated because our uh, per capita income is increasing more than the rate of population. But this is also another concept given by economists. Anyway, uh, the third important concept we shall discuss about the theory of demographic transition. Demographic, you know, that demographic means the science of population is called demographic. The science of population is called demographic. According to demographers, there are three stages of population growth. Three stages, first, second, and third stage. What the first stage? In the first stage, the concept is high birth rate and high death rate. High birth rate, high death rate. Second stage, high birth rate, low death rate. And third stage, low birth rate, low death rate. So what the, it is related to economic development. Remember, the demographic transition is related to economic development. When the country is a very undeveloped one, like the African countries or India before independent, uh, when it is a very undeveloped country, the birth rate is comparatively very high. And due to lack of uh, education or proper care is not taking place. And the death rate is very high because there is no proper, uh, what we call the medical facility available. So the infant mortality rate or the maternal mortality rate or the death rate of the mother is comparatively very high. So birth rate and death rate, when both are high, the net growth of population is very less. For example, if you uh, talk the data, uh, tell the data of 1901, the, the birth rate was 49 per thousand and death rate was 47. So 49 minus 47, that is 2. The net growth of population was only 2. So it is not a real concern, but remember, uh, when there is a underdevelopment or the country is an undeveloped one or very poor one, they are facing the first stage of population, uh, the demographic transition. And then uh, the, the second stage, in the second stage, what happened? The birth rate is still high, high birth rate, 
but uh, the death rate is low. For example, after independence in India, uh, promptly the government has taken different type of action: establishment of hospital, humanization program, control of diseases, control of famines, or any other thing. That there has been a sharp decline in the death rate. Death rate has come down, but uh, birth rate is continue to be high. For example. Uh, after independence, if you talk in 1951 or in 1971, 81, you know, that there is a, suddenly there is a decrease in the death rate. But birth rate continued to be high. For example, uh, in 1981, you will say that the birth rate was uh, 30 uh, per thousand, whereas the death rate come down to 10. I mean, there is a 20 increase in the population. It means uh, the growth rate is comparatively very high because when the country is uh, developing. But in the third stage of demographic transition, when it is a developed countries, for a country like, for example, America, or Japan, or Sweden, or Australia, there, the thing that uh, the, the additional uh, child is a burden for the family, additional, the marginal uh, child is a burden for the family, and uh, mostly educated people. Uh, when the standard of living is comparatively very high, the cost of education is very high, standard, or uh, the piece of land in a uh, urban area is very high. People do not prefer a big family. So most of the rich people, and particularly in the developed country, uh, they favor a small family. And uh, so the birth rate is comparatively very high. Yeah, the education plays very vital role. And uh, the problem like the cost of living is a very important question. And the death rate is eventually because uh, they have the good medical facility available, the death rate is low. So almost today people go to any European country. The birth rate and death rate are almost all equal. It is around 8 to 10. The, the birth rate is 10 and uh, the death rate is around 8 or 7. So in the first stage of demographic transaction, uh, where the country is very undeveloped one, the growth rate of population was less. When you go to the uh, third stage of demographic transition, uh, that is uh, the developed country, the growth rate is very high. But when you go to the second stage of demographic transition, for example, India, where uh, the question of overpopulation or population explosion takes place in the second stage. So we are in the second stage of a demographic transition till now. Our status has not increased. But, uh, Many countries, many uh, European country or this American country or some of the uh, developed country of the Asian region, they are able to reduce the problem of population. Anyway, so population, as I told you, here population is both uh, uh, blessing in one hand and there is a cost in it. A sizable population is the need of the hour. And uh, overpopulation is a dangerous thing. Like our country today, we have witnessed many things that uh, how the population is, you have to take care of uh, the hospital or the education or many other things you have to uh, take into consideration. Anyway, so uh, here we shall discuss about when we talk about the demography, certain basic concept you will have to understand. Uh, one is life expected. Life expectancy, I'm just giving hints about it. One of the average number of life the people is, are living. For example, in India, the life expectancy is around uh, 67. Second question is infant mortality rate. So these are certain important you know, points to you know. Infant mortality means the death rate, remember it is calculated per thousand. And in the undeveloped country, where there is no medical facilities, when there is no other type of facility available, infant mortality is comparatively very high. Uh, in the underdeveloped country, in the, uh, including India, I will go to uh, the African region or somewhere else, that the infant mortality rate is very high. And another question is age composition. This is a very important concept. Today, we are just uh, happy that uh, India is the youngest country of the world, and even our leaders, Prime Minister, everybody are there making praise. Uh, we are the youngest nation. So here, yeah, we talk about three important concepts. Uh, the distribution of this. Of the age is distributed into three parts. One is called the 
of the child population 0 to 14 then working population 15 to 59 that is called the working population and the the last one is 60 and above that is called the old population so age composition your tells you what a what percentage of people of your country are living in which any in our country uh, in western is that uh, uh, we have the youngest nation of the world because majority of the people are uh, between uh, uh, 35 age 35 age but here very important question uh, 0 to 14 what is called the child population 60 and above that is called the old population and both the group the child population as well as the the uh, infant population or the uh, sorry the old population both are consumer they do not participate in the production the child is not working the old men are not working so the question is what is the percentage of working population in your country and you will astonish around 40 out of 100 40 percent of the people are working population and 60 percent of the population are just consumer in our country 60 percent are consumer 40 percent are so in a, in a family of uh, five only two are working and three are consuming and that is a very uh, dangerous thing available in a country like India. Another question is uh, that uh, the, the sex composition or what we call the uh, sex ratio. Sex ratio means uh, the number of female per 1000 of male. Number of female per 1000 of male. So it is, it is it will, uh, you might have come across in your graduation level that it is against the female country, female population in our country. For example, in uh, last census or in 2001 census, so it was 933, 933 female per 1000 of male. In the last census, it was 940. It means uh, if the, if the, as per biology, discussed with my friend uh, with line purple tripati told once that it should be uh, 1000 is to 1008 1000 male is to 1008 if, if, if there is no check biology tells like this but in our country it is very serious condition if you go to state like your Punjab uh, state like your uh, Haryana in Bihar Rajasthan it is around 850 female out of 1000 male 850 in our state is the odisha it is comparatively good uh, 872 uh, here the question of education is there we are not treating the girl child as equal with the male child if you go to the state distribution or the district distribution uh, kerala is the state in india where the girl number or, or the, the you, female is 1040 per 1000 male it is 140 in Odisha, Ganjam probably Ganjam is the only district where the female are more than the male but uh, the most educated district most educated district of Odisha is Kurda district for example you will astonish if you go to the data there is 901 901 female for to when educated people are also creating problem and they do not want to see same status with their male child with the female child so this is a very serious problem in european economy even in america even in us ussr or the russia there is 1150 1150 female per 1000 but there is a scarcity of male in the country like your russia but uh, our situation is also not good, and that's the reason the uh, government today or yesterday, any government, let's say, they are giving much priority for the women education, empowerment of women, and we should uh, treat uh, them equally, just like uh, a boy or the son. Okay. So let me say another question is uh, the literacy level. Or uh, literacy, you know, that the mirror, that the indicator. Uh, literacy as the definition tells that a person who is able to read write or understand a particular language he is called literate 
बट रिमेम्बर लिटरेसी प्ले वेरी वाइटल रोल बिकॉज एजुकेटेड पर्सन कैन एबल टू डिस्टिंग व्हाट इज गुड व्हाट इज बेड एंड यू कैन एबल टू अर्न ए बेटर ब्रेड फॉर द फैमिली देन द ओन एजुकेटेड वन एजुकेटेड पीपल यू नो दैट हियर व्हेन द पीपल आर एजुकेटेड देयर इज अ चांस ऑफ ऑक्यूपेशनल डिस्ट्रीब्यूशन ऑक्यूपेशनल डिस्ट्रीब्यूशन इज पॉसिबल एंड पीपल कैन जंप फ्रॉम वन ऑक्यूपेशन टू अनदर ऑक्यूपेशन फ्रॉम फ्रॉम एग्रीन सोसाइटी टू इंडस्ट्रियल सोसाइटी और फ्रॉम सर्विस सेक्टर तो एजुकेशन प्लेस ए वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट रोल एंड द रेट ऑफ लिटरेसी यू नो दैट अगेन आई टोल्ड यू दैट इट इज इन ऑलमोस्ट ऑन द अंडर डेवलप कंट्री इट इज कंपैरेटिवली वेरी पुअर फॉर एस इन द डेवलप कंट्री द रेट ऑफ लिटरेसी इज अराउंड 99 बट स्टिल नाउ इन आवर कंट्री इट इज 75 और मे बी विल कंसीडर द न्यू डाटा न्यू सीरीज ऑफ डाटा इट इज 80 टू 85 परसेंट स्टिल 15 परसेंट पीपल और 20 टू 50 परसेंट पीपल आर इलिटरेट इन आवर कंट्री तो दिस इज अनदर वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट and another serious problem uh, what we are facing today it is very important in the post covid scenario that the rural or urban distribution you know everybody want to stay in town in the urban area because availability of all facilities are there opportunity for getting a job is better as compared to the village and uh, due to the small farmer the marginal farmer the agricultural laborer they are not able to earn their bread in the villages so migration is a very serious problem migration whatever migration migration of the people from the rural area to urban area and there is a congestion in the urban area i will go to the city like your mumbai or even delhi uh, even uh, calcutta even go to bhubneshwar even to sambalpur or anywhere else this is a very serious problem the population is increasing population is continuously increasing and uh, the problem of uh, sanitation problem of housing problem of food comparatively the problem is a very important uh, problem in the urban development so remember so when we talk about uh, the the concept of economic development we have to take into consideration all these factors that is the life expectancy educational ratio sex composition literacy and uh, urban rural distribution yeah i want to add something that uh, it will go to uh, america Uh, or england in england you know 91% uh, population out of total 91% people are living in urban area only 9% people are in the rural area but in our country uh, around 38% people living in the urban area and 62% people in the rural area so anyway so we have to check the migration we have to provide all the basic requirement the basic uh, facilities that is to be provided to the people those who are in the villages so there should not be any migration and today you know you might have heard you might have seen the television or somewhere else or in the train how the immigration is taking place so there is very serious issue you have to provide the basic needs to the people in their own place employment in their own place so that they will not be dependent upon us so there is very uh, serious problem we have to take anyway then another question is uh, population leads to many serious problems one question is population and poverty so there is a direct correlation between the two when the population is increasing and the national income is constant or national income is not increasing at that stage that the the per capita income will come down the standard of living will decrease so population brings more and more poverty poverty uh, one most important contribution the population has made to our country is this that is population population contributes greater way for more and more poverty second question is uh, environment and population so there is again there is a direct relation between the two population growth has a negative effect on environment the population growth makes increasing demand for natural factor like land water forest air everything and there is constant population is rising but the natural resources is constant so there is a over exploitation of resources so when 
there is a over exploitation of resources again i told you remember the what i have used the malthusian way nature will take its own care nature will take its own care if you exploit the nature the day will come the nature will exploit you it will cut all the trees you know that we are just worried about why the elephants are coming to the town elephants are coming to the town because you have cut their forest you have entered to their area so they are entering to you so environmental pollution which today most of the economists most of the policy makers most of the uh, political uh, boss or the philosopher if you there we should be more careful for a good environment and what we call the sustainable development sustainable development you know that development which does not compromise the needs of the future generation so real development is the development which is sustainable continued over a period of time the next generation should not suffer due to your fault you should not destroy the whole of the environment so population is playing a very very vital role in destroying the environment so excessive population is a dangerous thing and we have to uh, seek the population for anyway sustainable development is the need of the hour protection of environment is the need of the hour so therefore every country uh, whether india or somewhere else that a suitable population policy is required uh, if western is our country was the first country of the world in 1951 52 who have adopted the population policy a family planning program family welfare program different program we have adopted but uh, almost all um, we are not successful till now even though the, the growth rate has come down you know that in uh, 1991 even even uh, 1981 the population was ri- rising around 2% and more and today it has come down to 1.6 or 1.54 1.54 that is the growth rate today but the absolute growth is very high every year uh, we are reading one australia in our to your country one australia in india I mean two crores population the population of australia is two crores in our country india we are reading one australia one continent every year so there is a population policy is a required thing that uh, in our country let us uh, during the period of bhatfi uh, a new population policy was introduced in uh, 2000 new population policy Here, yeah, uh, we we have a dream of uh, a stabilization of population by the year 2045. Stabilization of population by the year 2045. So that is the ambition, and we have to encourage this our uh, people for go for family planning program. Family planning um, does not mean only the reducing the size 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 of the children or size of the family. it is uh, what we call the a, a better fairer and healthier children and happier home so that should be the concept and uh, proper immunization proper facility proper education it will provide all the needs to the people normally they will not be for a big family and it is a hard time you know the urban people uh, here the hospital is available medicine is available or uh, everything the infrastructure is available so that the reason they are able to control the population here only 35% people trying to control but 70% of the people those who are living in the villages they are trying to multiply the size of the population so this is very uh, serious issue to be deal with so that the reason uh, a, a population policy should be there and uh, the objective should be uh, to provide full employment to the people full employment is it should be the agenda agenda of the government full employment to be provided to the people second is that uh, women empowerment is necessary so that uh, the participation work the participation in the working participation of the women should be more for example uh, in our country as per the data available only 11% of the women are working women and uh, 89% of the women they are other housewives or doing some household work and out of that 11% only 3% women are working in uh, uh, 
different offices, organized sector, what we call. And 8% people are working in agrarian sector, which is unorganized. So we have to, agree, but people go to European country, people go to Mana, yeah, Italy or France or Germany or any other country. Here yeah, the working women percentage is 65. But in our country, it is only 11. So we are having a very huge population, but most of the people are either just not working or when they are not working, unemployed, disguised unemployed, unemployed, or seasonal unemployed, you have to provide them food. If unemployed people will not take food, then it is not a problem. But they are taking the share of the people, those who are working, and that is the most serious uh, problem uh, related to your uh, population. So population is to be controlled. Women empowerment is to be increased, and uh, good education is to be provided, and sustainable development is to be provided so that we can able to deal the situation in a better way. Then <coughs> we shall enter to another uh, discussion that is uh, in a country underdeveloped country. Uh, there is some institution of economic development. There are certain institutions and. Uh, here we shall discuss about the um, different type of institution like the government institution or the market failure or any other thing let me say introduce this thing so institution uh, here mana uh, implies the uh, for example uh, the concept of market failure let me come to the point market failure so you might have heard about uh, adam smith that once you view that you can go to microeconomics or macroeconomics. The earlier economists or the classical economists, they viewed that there should be a laissez faire state. Let the individual be alone. There should be individual freedom. And there should be a perfect competition. No interference from the side of the government should be a mere spectator. It should monitor the law and order situation defense of the country, justice, nothing more, nothing more, nothing less. So that was a view that is given by the classical economists. But uh, post Keynesian, post Keynesian means this after the great uh, depression of 1930s, uh, we view that government is, has to play a dominant role. The, the participation of government, particularly for the welfare of the people or when they are the when the market is not uh, able to give you the desired result or market is failed, failed means when the demand and supply are not adjusting each other and when it is not a perfect competition type of things, that the uh, government should come. Here, we shall come across two important concepts the concept of perito optimality. Perito, B perito, we might have heard, in the world perico, we might have discussed. If you that it is not possible to make someone better off. It is not possible to make someone better off without making someone worse off. View, it is not possible to make someone better off without making someone worse off. And according to Ferito, economic welfare means if there is an improvement of any one individual, without making harm to any other individual okay without making harm to any individual if some individual is better off then the social welfare is maximized that is a view given by period so the concept of welfare tells you that uh, there is the economic efficiency economic efficiency better utilization or allocation of resources can able to bring a better welfare for the society. But remember, there is a situation, uh, you know that perfect competition is a myth. Always perfect competition is not available. Perfect competition is not available. Always. There may not be large and more buyers, mm -hmm. a pre and pre exit. So there is some monopoly element. So when there is a monopoly element in the economy, here the concept of market or the market is not able to fulfill the desire of the people so when we talk about uh, this 
uh, we have to uh, discuss about the concept of public goods. Uh, you know that public goods are those goods which are supplied by the government. Mm -hmm. And here, the principle of exclusion is not applied. For example, a road or a lighthouse. Market cannot supply you all these things. Or the demand and supply or something else that will not supply the things. Say a lighthouse or a drainage system in your town. Private individual will not supply this thing. So these goods are called public goods. And here, the market fails to supply, supply the public goods. Here, the role of the government is very important uh, because without uh, the interference of the government, without the uh, so for today, uh, we, we are talking about development. The role of government is prime because there are certain things here without, for example, education, uh, free education, or uh, if you go to the school level or college or somewhere else, your education is uh, almost all free in our country. Uh, though we have a fundamental right to education act up to 14 years, we will get free education. And after that also, if you go to government school or colleges, if you compare other European economy or any any other country other than that of you, India and some uh, welfare oriented country, the cost of education is very high. So here, it is the government to come forward, government to satisfy the needs. And remember, when the go government supply these things, the principle of MC equal to MR of the profit maximization what you remember the microeconomics. Uh, profit is maximized when marginal cost equal to marginal revenue. And here this condition failed because the government supplies even if there is certain loss. Loss. Suppose uh, many hundreds of trains are now coming to Odisha. And it is the Odisha government has to provide the basic needs to the people, either in the containment zone or somewhere else, in a welfare state, it is expected from every government, and it is the responsibility of the every government to provide such things. So we may call it a public goods. So when we talk about the uh, any other uh, concept, uh, another very popular concept is called externalities. Uh, remember, I'm just giving some example. Uh, suppose externalities mean. Uh, uh, action of one individual or firm affect the individual or firm. Your action, when your action affects the action of others, that is called externalities. Uh, externalities may be the positive externalities or negative externalities. Uh, suppose there is a um, construction of effect. Suppose the Busan steel plant or this is the cement or the Vedant or anywhere in Gulf. People will get the employment. Organization will take place. They will provide goods and services. There will be mall, cinema hall, somewhere else. Everything will be available. So they are contributing for the development of the society. When they are contributing, provide employment, generating employment or any other one, electrification, urbanization, that is called the positive side. A negative externality mean of when they are creating um, environmental pollution for them. When a big large scale industry is established, automatically the river will be polluted, there will be air pollution, there will be water pollution. So if all sort of things will take place, so that is called the negative external. So when we take a project, we have to decide. Uh, when the negative externality is greater than the positive externalities, when the negative is greater than the positive externalities, we should not allow all such type of project. When it is creating more environmental pollution or any other, it is a challenge for the sustainable development of the country, we should not allow such type of project. Anyway, so uh, Externality is very important. We have to when the cost benefit ratio in the measurement, this plays a very important role, whether it is um, uh, making the benefit or it is not going to the, uh, solve the problem. So, normally, uh, in case of uh, market uh, condition, that almost all the market are just incomplete market, and people are 
another very important concept is information failure. Information failure means uh, sometimes there is a process of imperfect information in the market that provide uh, government intervention. So with monopoly there, you will not get a good rate. Proper rate is not available. Proper information is not available. Uh, what type of raw material or whether it is good for the health or any other thing is not available. So there is a very uh, information failure there. Here, the government intervention is necessary. Then, sometimes uh, we see uh, there is a failure from the government side, like the market side, there is a failure from the government side. Uh, government side means almost all the public sector, uh, you know that uh, post uh, new economic policy, post 1990s, uh, we have seen that uh, the performance of public sector was very painful. And that is the reason, there is a negative growth rate in almost all the public sector uh, prior to um, mana, that uh, new economic policy. That is the reason uh, we have introduced the LPG model. That uh, the new economic policy, uh, if you go to the 1956 industrial policy and 1991 economic uh, industrial policy, there we have given much more priority to the, the sector like your uh, public sector. Later on, uh, due to the uh, continuous failure. Uh, of the public sector, government is bound to adopt the process of privatization, globalization, liberalization. Government also fails. Government is most of the time government fails. Uh, many reasons are there. One of the most important reason is they are not motivated by profit. Profit is not a uh, consideration for the government. Similarly. Uh, you know that you might have heard, you are reading every day, there is a high level of um, corruption in the government machinery. So when a, a particular um, project is undertaken, a high volume of corruption is taking place. That is the reason uh, most of the project of government is not giving the satisfactory result. So another question, uh, a proper governance is necessary proper administration is necessary, proper role of the government is necessary. If a proper, uh, like the different program, particularly this, um, uh, take the example of direct benefit scheme or any other thing. So that has already checked the level of corruption, direct benefit, the, the subsidies and other. We are directly getting, earlier there was a um, modified intention uh, or today somebody is working in uh, yeah, Manriga. Uh, the the um, government is just sending money directly, like the, the gas subsidy we are getting uh, directly. So a proper governance is, governance is necessary. Uh, honest governments is the, the call of the day. So for example, uh, recently the government of Odisha, they have introduced the 5T. That is also a very important process that fact uh, tells you that if there is a concept of governance good governance is the the want of it and when because we are paying taxes whenever the government is spending money a rupee the government is spending uh, remember that is your hard earned money either you have to pay it in terms of direct taxes or in terms of indirect taxes like gst or xi duties or any other tax so we are paying this thing so we have the right we have to write the act the question and a good governance is the need of the hour. Then uh, another uh, concept uh, now we shall uh, come across that there are certain things that community participation in economic terms. Community participation in economic terms. For example, <clears throat> uh, Individual decision and community decision. Individual may be wrong. So when they have discussed about the concept as a whole, let us say, for example, uh, the consumer maximize some utility function subject to certain mana budget constant. So here, the role as a whole 
community is playing a very important role. You might have heard about uh, Muhammad Yunus, uh, the Nobel laureate of Bangladesh. In his uh, concept of the wall uh, free of war, if you the concept of SAG self help group, SHG. So that is a concept of community. Community individual decision and community decision. So both are individual as a whole, you are taking the decision, and when it comes to uh, the community as a whole, mix up with the community, uh, we are trying to uh, gather. But remember, we are also bounded by certain custom, certain tradi tradition, and uh, certain uh, historical backgrounds are there out, out of which our economic decision allocation can take place. Historical decision tells you that what was the uh, system, what are the custom, what are the tradition. Remember, sometimes economic decision may not be appropriate or may not be fit to your custom and tradition. For example, uh, we are spending huge quantity of money in the uh, marriages or in funeral or somewhere else even if that is unproductive even if expenses in the marriages is unproductive that is going to not going to give you any remuneration or any income or something else but uh, it's because people are spending there is a demonstration effect in the society we are bound to spend uh, the amount of money because that is the need we spend because that was the need of the time. We have to, as because your neighbor is spending, you have to spend, as your relatives are spending, so you have to spend. Demonstration effect is there. And we have to check all sort of things. Unnecessary, unproductive expenses are to be controlled so that we can utilize the money for the uh, better uh, economic development of the people. So, anyway, as uh, we are going to the, the uh, final part of discussion that market may not give you the full things. Government control is necessary. And uh, particularly when we talk about the factors of production, the particularly two important factors, the land and labor, both are uh, primary factors of production that is available in the rural area. And the problem of the people of the rural area is comparatively very high as compared to the people of the urban area. Because one very important question that most of the time it is debated, discussed, the credit market in the rural area, whenever you are making, want to make a startup or when you want to spend some money for any particular purpose, a credit market is not conducive, not helpful. Uh, to the people in the village area, they are dependent upon uh, the village money lenders. I remember the village money lender, he exploits. He may be the landowner, he may be the employer, or he is the money lender, and he exploits the people with a high rate of uh, interest. You know, that uh, if you go to villages of the countryside, that the rate of interest is almost all 120%. Mean out of 10 on 100 rupees, you have to pay 10 rupees per month. Mean uh, 12 into 10, that is 120 percent is the rate of interest. And the organized sector, the bank, cooperatives, and other, even the the government is giving direction for them to provide loan and other facility to the villages, but they are not reaching to the villages. Here, the government is giving Odisha government, you know, that they are giving loan to the farmer with one percent rate of interest, but the loan is not available in time. The poor farmers, the needy farmers, they are not getting the opportunities. Again, this rich farmer, you will astonish that from the cooperative bank, many rich farmers are taking loan credit with one or two percent. And they are just giving loan to others with a huge rate of, let us say, uh, five rupees per month or ten rupees per month in worst case. So this is the way there is a exploitation by the rich uh, pigeons to the poor people and the banks and other available. They are not performing their duty in a proper way in the villages. Again, 
uh, when we enter uh, to the conclusion part, uh, proper information is necessary, proper sustainability is necessary, proper guidance is necessary, proper education is necessary. If we deal all these things in a better way or in a proper way, economic development is not impossible. So our Prime Minister is making a dream of 5 trillion economy uh, before, before COVID-19. 5 trillion economy. But today, we are, as the discussion is going on, you are reading newspaper daily, the countries, um, just like uh, we were discussing about a post cancian in course of time, uh, uh, our economist friend, Dr. Asis, Puja, or any other one, they have to write or they have to discuss about the post COVID economy. Post COVID. Because everything before uh, uh, our uh, Great Depression, after Great Depression, and uh, before COVID and after COVID, the problem of employment, the type of all the, I, I think that being a student of economics, I realize uh, we have to rewrite many theories, many theories you have to rewrite because, and today you know that the, the person, the worker or the, uh, those who are returning from other um, uh, side of the states today to your state, they may not return back. You have to provide them employment. You have to be uh, what Prime Minister is again is telling about uh, the self the Reliance India, uh, India to be stand in the, its own leg. And we have to rewrite many theories. And the concept of globalization has been changed. And today, we as the citizen, our responsibility is increasing. It is joining hand together. Uh, maybe your course, you have to appear the examination, that is another question. You have to read, you can score mark, that is another question. But as a student of social science, so I request all of you uh, to give more time, think about it, what the common man will do if all the fruits will be taken by a group of people. You have to, it is your responsibility, it is my responsibility, it is everybody's responsibility to bring back the economy to the road. New situation will arise, new challenges will arise. And uh, it is your opportunity, it is my um, opportunity that we are living in a world today. We are the citizen of post-COVID, pre-COVID or post-COVID, both world, let us say, today. We have to rewrite the things. Development is to be rewrite in a better way. And responsibility is increasing. Everybody's responsibility. Okay. This most today. Thank you, everybody, for participation. Uh, I think due to constraint of time i may not satisfy your desire but however thank you dr asis uh, puja and other giving me the opportunity to share my thought with the young friends thanks a lot sir actually you have done a lot of justice and i could see the constancy with which all these 12 participants were there they have not moved out they have not logged out and they are listening very carefully to various concepts that you have discussed on the social and institutional aspects uh, of development. This is very, very interesting and insightful as well. I'm sure our learners would have got immensely benefited out of this session. You have touched upon the concept of property, the relative versus the absolute property, which inequality and the inequality of income and how the tax and transfer mechanism can deal with the inequality and uh, leads towards some degree of equality. Then we also discussed what is economic development, various indicators of in economic development, including uh, human development index, which encompasses various uh, theories, um, various, various factors like education, then the health, uh, life expectancy, I, mean, I would like to say, and the uh, life expectancy, education, and the income parameter, that is per capita income. 
then population and the economic development and the role that economic the population plays both both from the demand side as well as from the supply side in the uh, economic development process uh, in the demand side the population acts as a uh, consumer while in the supply side it is a factor of production that is labor which earns wages so actually the, the wages and salary earners are the one who are basically found to be poor and the other non wage earner that is in the capitalist society capitalist sections of the society earns lot of profit and that diverts the in, in income disparity between various groups of people in this context we have also discussed various theories relating to population such as the marxian theory which is talking basically about how the population growth is linear whereas the food supply is non linear or other resources growth is non linear uh, over a period of time and that causes lot of problem further we have also discussed the optimum control uh, or this optimum theory of population where various combinations of birth rate and death rate over uh, in different time zone of a country time phases of the phases of a country uh, is talked about then then we have also discussed how india is a young nation today and there is a scope for demographic dividend that is this young mass can really contribute to the growth if we miss this opportunity probably we will not get this at a later stage then the occupational distributions was also discussed Uh, talking of on the migration issues, then rural urban migration issues, then basic uh, theory, basic uh, relationship between the environment and population was discussed. Then the sustainable development every year, uh, how India is adding to its population, which is equal to the Australian population, and then what is the role of government and what government is planning to achieve. by 2045 that is stabilizing the population then we have also discussed how women empowerment and education are critical then the concept of market failure then the minimal role of the government the concept of pareto optimality then institutions are basically a law an institutions is basically nothing but the humanly devised constraints that saves for human interactions so institutions are basically laws customs and traditions of a society we would like to see the individual and the farm work within the boundaries of these institutions when they work a uh, work or when they buy or when they sell or when they act as any economic agent so good institutions are very essential to promote growth in a society similarly where institutions may hamper the economic growth process this is what we have discussed and then we have discussed about the concept of um, externality uh, there are some students who have in between were asking questions one question that was on uh, of, of the concept of externality one student has asked i have already answered this through the chat box uh, that is basically the actions of one agent uh, of any agent which is affecting the actions of other agents either negatively or positively i have given the example of a covid 19 uh, patients or persons who hides the decision of his being affected and then get mixed with the society will have a definite negative externality for the society because he will impact other individuals so this is the example i have cited here so that people can connect similarly there are a lot of examples of positive externality a learned person may spread uh, education uh, or awareness in and around his surroundings how to uh, save yourself from covid 19 and that could be a positive externality his mere presence and guiding the people in the society could have positive implication a similar examples a smoker uh, who smokes spreads negative externality uh, because the person standing next to him could be a passive smoker 
there is there is another question that was asked on population what is the mathematician theory of population which i have already answered uh, here um, if the students have any more question they can still write however we have also sir has discussed nicely the concept of uh, government intervention and how such government interventions are necessary for correcting the market uh, market means if there is a market failure for some reason or other the Uh, maybe in the case of public goods or externality generally the market fails and there the interference of the government becomes very very essential similarly the rural problems are highlighted and we all know the rural problems are very very essential or more in comparison to the problems that in urban india faces and the particular problems specific to the credit market was also mentioned because in the rural area the credit market is under developed and uh, the people are facing lot of problems because they have to take help of the local money lender and um, therefore they are not getting timely access to credit which is very very essential for producing their product particularly agricultural product um, so if you have any questions please feel free to ask and otherwise i would like to thank sir and then we have two three minutes you can ask some questions i am sure sir will take it if any question is there please feel free two questions were asked which i have answered sir through the chat mode which i thought it might affect the flow um any questions this is where you can ask lot of questions because this is not very uh, mathematical as the earlier two sessions were <laughs> okay. and nishant has already shared the link for your feedback please share your feedback before leaving the session if there is no questions we should formally close thank you sir thank you and then hope to see you again uh, very soon in this forum okay thank you everyone everybody for, uh, for your patience listening even though there is time constraint uh, thank you everyone everyone and thank you dr vasis ms puja and all nishan bhai everybody thank you all. thank you sir So, formally, for a little bit.